Chain Stacks on the radio. Oh, yeah. I love that. Shall, shall, shall we play a game? Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Getting geeky in Little Rock. It's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Uh, it's, it's actually nice to be back live. The last couple of weeks have been pre recorded. So it's nice to be back live today, which means that uh, you could call in if you wanted at 501 823 0965. That's 501 823 0965. Uh, or you could tweet me at Shane Plays. That's S H A N E P L A Y S. Zach, do we, is the Facebook stream going? Okay, folks. Also, remember you can go to don't go to Shane Plays on Facebook. Go to the Dave Ellswick Show because we broadcast out of his studio. So if you go to the Dave Ellswick Show Facebook page, there's a live video stream and people watch it. I mean, it surprises me how much people watch it. But check it out if that's your thing. Again, this is Shane Plays Geek Talk: A Journey into the Things We Love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Uh, and just really glad to be back. I love doing live radio uh, when I can. And, uh, you know, even with the, uh, of course, everybody, everybody's talking about COVID-19, the coronavirus right now. Uh, but, lot, you know, and we do want to be smart and we want to we want to be cautious and wise, but we don't want to be fearful or panicky and life does go on. So, you know, Salem, we're, we're, we're still broadcasting out of our studios up here, taking our precautions i've I've actually got in my pocket i've got i'll show it to my guest i've got my i've got my secret stash of hand sanitizer <laughs> right there in case we need it and today we're going to be talking about a topic i've been wanting to do for a long time and it finally finally got it uh to happen so excited we're gonna be talking about competitive gaming and i think that is a great topic to have for the show because i try to cover all things fun geeky uh, and and there is a there is a big competitive gaming scene out there, even here in Arkansas. And I want to make sure that people know about it. And we're not talking about competitive board games. We're not talking about competitive role playing games. That stuff actually happens at conventions. We're talking about competitive video games. Competitive? How would would you say console games? How would how would y'all say it? Uh, for the genre that I mostly do, it's mostly uh, console games. Uh, some people play on PC, but uh, the tournament standard is console. Is console okay? And that's Max. How do you what What do you go by? Because I know I know your handle on Discord, but what do you go by? How do How do you want me to introduce you? Max, Max is fine. Okay, yeah. Max. <laughs> Max Double X. Yeah. So Max Double X is in the studio, and he helps organize a lot of the of of the. Is it just the Arkansas gaming scene, or do you go out more? Do you go out on a larger region than just Arkansas, or? Um, some uh, regional um, tournament organizers uh, reach out to me and uh, have me uh, assist them with certain things or, or mentor them on certain things. But my personal focus is on the Arkansas scene. Okay, and uh, is, would you do you do you feel it's growing? Is it big? Is it state? Like what what is the current state of the Arkansas competitive gaming, video gaming, console gaming scene? Uh, the Arkansas scene is fairly strong right now in terms Good. of numbers uh in terms of numbers probably the strongest it's been ever uh but um you know we it's it kind of it goes through uh it rises and falls sure. throughout the years so some years we have very 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 strong players uh maybe not necessarily as many players but we just have like you know national competitive uh national level competitive players and some years we have a lot of players and but the uh, the peak isn't as high. And how hard would you say, and we'll cover more of this later, uh, but I want this show to be kind of a good introduction to people who maybe don't know about it. Uh, and also maybe if you're an existing competitive gamer out there and you're listening to the show, maybe maybe you'll hear some stuff here about events or something you don't know about. Um, and then also if you're a competitive gamer, you know, help, help share it. Like when this comes out by podcast, because this is a live radio show and then also a podcast, you know, share it out and get other people, you know, interested would you consider it a hobby, a hobby, a circuit, a scene? What do you call it? Um, all of the above. All of the above. I mean, yeah. uh, in my opinion, first and foremost, we're a community. Right. Um, I, I stress that because, um, you know, uh, the personal relationships you have with people, um, even as a competitor, it, it just helps you become a better competitor, helps you become a better person. Right. And, um, you know. Cool. All right, Max. Well, we will definitely be talking more about competitive gaming and your role in it. 
as the show goes. We've also got this returning to the show, friend of the show, Nick Harvey, Nicholas Harvey, a.k.a. Swigs. What's up, man? Nothing much. Your beard is mighty. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's mightier than the last time I saw you. I feel like less of a man. Oh, I really no, do. No, no, no. Don't feel that way. But it is definitely mightier. <laughs> yeah. I've been working on this for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My bad. No, yeah. yeah. Well, so what happens is your beard is so mighty, it actually trap some of the sound coming from now so we got to get you closer to the mic so and you're and you're the, the whole reason we're having this particular show today was several months ago you were you know you're telling me more and more about the competitive gaming uh scene in arkansas and then you you recommended that i talk to max correct so, so it's all your fault and that's right. Whatever I'm just the guy that and, knew some guys. Yeah, you're just that guy that knew some guys. And you're you're active in the scene. Like where you'll go to tournaments and stuff, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, I try to make as many as I can, but honestly, there hasn't been a lot in recent time. But yes, I do like to go. What are, What are your games of choice? I stick to fighting games typically. Yeah. I used to a long time ago. I did play Halo competitively, but that's been a long while. But now I've just pretty much migrated to fighting games and stick solely to that. Okay. Now. One of the games that I see being played, I even see sometimes just up at the game store, just spontaneously people bring in their consoles and play like Smash, Smash Brothers. So do you consider Smash Brothers a fighting game or is that a different genre? Um, I guess if you want to get super technical, yeah. Yeah, that's a fighting game, but it's right. really different than other fighting games currently on the market. Yeah, it's got its own energy and mechanics and everything. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've literally seen at game stores... People bring in uh, switches and monitors and just, boom, just just go for it. And it's not a tournament or anything. They're just all getting together to play Smash. So, And then uh, I think at SpaCon last year, was there not some Smash gaming? or Yes. Yeah, so. uh, yes, there was a very good uh, pot bonus, and we had really good competition from uh, around the state and around the, uh, around the region. So if, like in role-playing games, not... You know, because that's, I mean, I love gaming of all kinds. I like video games. I like board games. I like, uh, but I'm a, t- I'm a really big tabletop role play, playing gamer. And, and D&D is obviously the big one. That's the Coke of, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you know, you want a Coke? Yeah. What kind? Pepsi. Right. So you say D&D, even though you mean role playing half the time. Uh, D&D is the big one. So what's mm-hmm. the go to game? Like, what's the most common game that you're going to find at every event that the most people are interested in? Uh, by far the biggest scene, uh, the biggest fighting game community is Smash. Smash, okay. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then you have other, you know, like uh, the kind of fighting games that the Nick's talking about. What, like, uh, I mostly play Street Fighter at the Street moment. Street Fighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Do you play the guy, the 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 guy with the muscle shirt and the mohawk? The guy, not the mohawk. Oh, he had like a. Uh, it's a flat top. It's, it's a like, flat top. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, but it's a huge flat yeah. top. Yeah, he's like he's he's as 90s as he gets. He yeah. looks so 90s. <laughs> yeah, so that cool is, character, but no, nah, I don't really play him too much. Now, uh, do you, now, I, and I know there's a, not every game out there makes it into the tournament scene, but uh, you know, I mean, I'm trying to think of fighting it like Tekken. Mm-hmm. Uh, are, are any of the Dragon Ball games, or are, are those tournament worthy? Dragon or? Ball, uh, well, the ones that most people think of, yeah. those aren't generally in the fighting game tournaments. Okay. But its newest one, Dragon Ball Fighters, uh, it's a 3v3 Marvel vs. Capcom style fighting game. Right. And uh, that one has, is, has been in uh, multiple fighting game tournaments. All right. Zach, buddy, you put... you. You you watch video games. You don't play a lot of video games. I do. Like I watch Call of Duty, even more to come back. Right. Like I said, those huge games where you know we're talking about competitive gaming, Call of Duty with esports and all those things. I, I mean, I pay attention to those stuff. So did did you know that there was like this competitive gaming scene around here where people have tournaments playing these games and there's prize money and and all that? Well, I didn't know about that. Yeah, but I'm, I'm planning there's to go fat to that. cash. <laughs> Max walks in and just starts throwing. Throwing so, green like at that. people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I tell you what, I mean, if they were to take it to uh, chess, you know, make money playing chess, I would love chess? to do that. Chess? <laughs> competitive chess? Yes, competitive chess. All right, why okay, not? Okay. Hey, so, so Zach, uh, it's, it's bittersweet today because, you know, I'm glad I have a live show today. Last couple of weeks have been pre-recorded. Yeah. And I've known this is coming. You've been sharing with me. But today's your last show to, to engineer the show. And I'm going to miss you, buddy. Thank so you. So I, w- I, w- I, I definitely wish you well. You're a great guy, hard worker, 
I, I, it's bittersweet for me because I'm glad for you because you're moving on to some stuff you want to do. But I've loved having you as you know, first a friend, second somebody helping out with the show. So, uh, but you know, you're getting me in trouble with Muffin, right, <laughs> folks? For those of you I don't know, the head of my news team, Sal. It's not him. It's his grandmother and her dog Muffin. They love Zach. <laughs> and then if they don't get to hear Zach on the radio, it, I get it's bad. I mean, bad things happen to me and the show. So. What do you, I mean, did you take that into consideration when you chased your dreams, Zach? <sighs> did you take did me, did you take my safety with Muffin uh, into consideration? I did, but I, I just, you know, I think they're, they're going to let you off. There. You think, I think so? I think I so. Think, now, the coronavirus is a serious thing, so I'm, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm having fun here. But don't you think maybe he kind of engineered this whole corona to make you want to stay put and not <sighs> change jobs right now? Gosh. That's how serious this muffin situation is. And I wouldn't put it past him. He broke I, into a lab in China <laughs> last year to keep you on the show. And yet here you are anyway, bravely forging your path. Goodness. Bravely for I think you're a great guy, Zach. And I wish you you're always well you can come hang out on the show anytime you want to. Yes, sir. You're a great guy. You're a hard worker. Your attitude is fantastic. And uh you will you will do well, sir. So uh, there, whoever the the people that are getting you are are uh, are glad, you know, are are getting a, a great person. And you know, a lot of people don't know Zach. Like when Zach first started working here and doing the show, I mean, like you were in college, and I mean, you're just in a whole different phase of your life now. You right. graduated, and you're, mm-hmm. yeah. So I got to ask you because uh, the model detective agency is is still running his dossier on all this stuff, but everything going okay in the romantic life? Yes, sir. It is okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, good. Yes, I'm sir. good for you. When I disappear <laughs> next week, you know, I hope you feel good about making this change. Because oh. muffin, man, I'm telling you, Zach, that's okay. Did you did? Do you want to tell muffin how to get a hold of you in case after you're gone? From time to time, I'll drop in. So but you're on Twitter. Throw out your Twitter so Muffin can keep up with you and maybe take some heat off me. It is Z A Thomas. That's Z A T H O M A S. Nineteen thirty. That is the only social media that Zach does. Mm-hmm. Is is that? What is your? And, and speaking of coronavirus, it really is a serious issue. Which are you? Are you like, oh crud? Where's the sports? Well. When the NCAA tournament was canceled, that really, I was like, wow. This well, is it does really... finally give people a chance to get a perfect bracket. Yeah, <laughs> it just. <laughs> I got to say, I got to say on air publicly, I don't, you know, we're not in the end of the world doomsday scenario. Right. We are not at all. However, there, it's wise to be cautious. And right now, when it's just now really hitting America, it's good to get people to slow the spread and prevent the spread. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not upset. I think it's, it's, you know, when, when I think about my little boy at home, I, I'd rather keep him safe than watch us, than sports to happen. Right. I, I, that's just the way I got to throw it out there. I you understand. Know? Oh, now, yeah. but you know, at the same time, we don't p- want people to panic. You know, there, there is more toilet paper in the country, folks. There's toilet paper out there somewhere. It will show up. Everybody, it's okay. And you can, you know, you could take, you could take a knife and you could cut a roll of paper towels in half, and you got two rolls of toilet paper, folks. It's okay. We'll be all right. And see, I'm fine, because the neighborhood I live in has a lot of trees, and I got leaves everywhere. I got leaves for years. So anyway, Zach, we'll miss you. You're a heck of a good guy. Back to the back to the show here. And folks, I didn't want to tell people that if you go to uh, the Ar- Arkansas Democrat Gazette has made all of their... Um, coronavirus coverage for free because normally you have to pay to log in to the newspaper i think it's just arcdemgaz.com slash coronavirus or something like that and they have all the updates there for free which is very very good of them to do so all right speaking of competitive gaming and conventions and all that i know that is it comic-con got canceled right if you uh, comic-con got canceled e3 got canceled yeah and that, that sucker's in one. june uh, but I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they, and they made a good point. It's like that was a call from their insurance folks. They were like, you know, because that's such a big event. You either got to pull it now or not, you know. And so they went ahead and pulled it. Mm. Uh, so there, there is stuff getting canceled. But one thing that is not canceled right now that should be happening April 18th and 19th, unless we hear otherwise, and that's, I mean, that's over a month away. 
Hey, quick footnote. You're going to hear us mention the Centaur, C-E-N-T-A-R, gaming convention several times during this show. At the time of recording, it had uh, not been postponed or rescheduled, but since recording, the decision was made to reschedule the show after, uh, you know, the coronavirus pandemic and all the related precautions. So it was originally supposed to be mid-April. It's still coming. Still going to be super cool, but uh, disregard the dates that you hear in this podcast. Uh, is is there's a gaming convention that ties in to this console gaming, this competitive gaming we're talking about, and I'm going to let Max tell us about it. It's in Conway in mid-April. Tell us a little bit about it, Max. Yeah, the uh, convention is called Centaur. There's a lot going on. It's it's about gaming in general. There's going to be a magic tournament. There's going to be a tabletop events, but... Um, Part of what I'm in charge of, uh, along with some other people, is the uh, esports slash uh, video game aspect of it. So we're going to have a um, Super Smash Brothers uh, Ultimate Tournament uh, with a $1,000 pot bonus, as well as a Tekken 7 uh, tournament with a $500 pot bonus. And we'll also have some other um, other things on the side, uh, but those are the main uh, focus of so there uh, will be competitive gaming yes at, at, it's it's c-e-n-t-a-r so it's central arkansas i'm guessing that's what it's playing off yes. of but it's shortened and it sounds like the centaur creature is c-e-n-t-a-r correct and that'll be in at the conway expo center in april 18th and 19th if i remember correctly uh that's when the convention is as right. as for the um competitive gaming part of it that will only be on the 18th, Saturday. On Saturday. Mm-hmm. Okay, so right there, if you're interested, folks, in in getting into the scene mm-hmm. or just watching it and seeing what it's all about, on April 18th, go to the Conway Expo Center, and Max is going to be there organizing some, some competitive gaming right there. Live competitive gaming in the wild. In the wild. And, uh, and, all, and all precautions have been taken to protect spectators from the, from the competitors, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, um, the people who organize the convention, they, they take this very seriously. And right. uh, they're, they're definitely uh, looking out for everybody. And um, I don't necessarily speak for them, but, you know, I, I keep up with uh, what's going on. And, and uh, they're on top of that. Right. Uh, I will say, though, if anybody's interested in the uh, competitive uh, gaming aspect of the convention, um, th- there's a website, smash.gg slash centaur c-e-n-t-a-r sorry c-e-n-t-a-r right uh, 2020 and you can uh, go there and find some more information about um, exactly how the tournament's structured uh, how the payouts are going to be if you uh, if you place within the top few places that will pay out money and uh, you can just kind of see how how everything's structured so that you can you know figure out if this is something that you're interested in so you said it's tekken 7 and what mm-hmm. were the other what were the other games? Uh, the two games that we're focusing on this year are, are Tekken Seven and uh, the and the newest Smash Brothers. For and the, the newest Smash Brothers. Okay. Now, if somebody wants to come to an event like this, do they bring their own equipment, or is it all already there? Like, how does that work? So, for this event in particular, um, the, between the convention and the people running the events, we're taking care of all that. So they just need to show up. You just need to show up. Bring your own controller. Or okay. however you want do to they, control your Do character. they need to pre-register so people know, so you know how many people are coming, or how does uh, that work? We recommend that people pre-register if possible uh, on that website I just gave, uh, but it's not required. You can register okay. day of the event. Now, okay. don't try to, if if we say the tournament's going to start at 1 p.m., don't show up at 1 p.m. Right. Uh, that's just not going to right. work. But if you show up, you know, a few hours before then, before when we say the tournament starts, you should be fine. Okay. Very cool. So, uh, and I've, I've actually... Kind of got a, a Tekken story, I guess. Tekken's kind of one of the fighting games I have a little bit of a connect. I'm not a big fighting game guy. I'm not a good twitchy gamer. I, when I play fighting games, I'm the guy that the real fighting game people look down on because I use the easy mode buttons and all that stuff, and I just smash frantically and, and hope that I can win. Uh, so ba- I saw, like, back in the day, like in the, in the 90s, in the arcade, I saw Tekken. They had a huge Tekken mm-hmm. machine. And I'd never seen it. I was like, whoa, because it was all 3D polygon. You know, I was like, mm-hmm. whoa, what is this? And and I got to, is, is Yoshimitsu? Yoshi, is uh, he still in it? Because that was my favorite yes, character, he, he's still Yoshimitsu. So do they ever explain who would or what he is? He's like this weird thing. 
Honestly, I'm not sure on his backstory. I know he's uh, from Soul Calibur. Okay. Or Soul Edge. Or yeah. I don't. I don't remember what game he was originally in, but but he one, ended the Soul up Calibur in Tekken. series. Okay. Yeah, he's in both for some reason. Okay. I, I don't know exactly. Well, because he's that great. Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> I love- Actually, I can come in on this one. Okay. I, come on I, in. I, yeah. I studied up on this lore. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So Late Yoshimitsu <laughs> is like supposed to be a long line of people that are like samurai, but it's a soul that. Uh, possesses their body so it's like a soul or ghost yeah because there's that something moves. weird with his face <laughs> yeah. and yeah i just remember i love me some yoshimitsu yeah and uh every time probably the closest i've gotten to being a fighting gamer is when i would play as yoshimitsu and it would say like yoshimitsu wins or whatever i would get a thrill like <laughs> yoshimitsu won and i that was me so anyway you should feel good yeah but uh, you know anyway so then I was one of the I was one of the people I bought the PlayStation One before it became a big. Thing. I bought it like right when it first came out. <laughs> okay, and like one of the only <laughs> games you could get was Tekken. So I remember I got to and I took it home, and I was like, oh, and all these people were coming over and playing Tekken at my house because I had the PlayStation, and it looked especially for that time, mm-hmm. it looked amazing. Yeah, I think my first two games f- for the PlayStation were uh, Twisted Metal, <laughs> okay, and if, I don't know if that was a release game or not, but it was, and then and then Tekken, and, and so I've got fond memories of Tekken, even though I was never very good at it. So, all right, but we got Tekken lore. Yoshimitsu <laughs> is a long line of of soul steel, or he'll take you over. He's like a he's a ghost samurai that will take you over. Yeah, it seems to be the case. Okay, well there you go. I believe in this newest one, he has like a octopus tentacles or whatever coming out of him. Maybe he possessed an alien. Uh, I don't what, know. So it's it's like hentai is like smashing into <laughs> fighting games. I what guess the heck so. is going I'm on here? Trying to get that appeal, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Speaking of, um, and in hentai is not all anime. I don't want to imply that, but Nick is also one of my anime boys. So what's going on right now in anime that you're liking? <laughs> oh, what have I been watching? Honestly, I haven't watched a whole lot this season. Um, I've been keeping up with My Hero Academia. That's yeah, been pretty movie? solid. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen the movie now. Okay. Yeah. Did you watch it? I no, I was going to. I, my uh, fiance was saying that uh, I, I think the last showtime's already happened, or it's happening mm. like very soon. But yeah, I think it's about to be out of theaters. Okay, yeah, Zach, what were you gonna? You were gonna jump in on something? Well, there? see, I love My Hero Academia. That's actually my favorite. Is it your favorite the movie? I, yeah. actually, I mean, I was thinking about going to see. So I'm going to see if there's still some showtimes okay, for yeah. it. Let us know. <laughs> Yo, no, there's a. Um, yeah, in fact. Nick, you and I, we've gone to two Dragon Ball movies, haven't we? We went to the yeah. re-release of the original Broly movie, mm-hmm. and okay. then we went to the new Broly when it came out. Yes. So, yeah. That was Super fun. Broly, by the way. Still pretty good. I think it's a, yeah. probably the best movie in the entire series. You're talking about the uh, original? No, 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 no. The new one. The new the, one is amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. When he, like, he owns Goku. G- Goku's literally screaming as he's dragging his face, <laughs> and then they fight so hard they smash through space time. Like reality yeah it's crazy and then when frieza is just there watching and they yeah. cut, they fly up next to frieza and then Brody picks yeah. him apart <laughs> yeah that was they, fantastic yeah, they put him, yeah that's you know they did a really good job and i've already spent a whole, a whole show talking about this they did a really good job expanding on Broly's character he's much more i mean he's still he's still like a beast but he's more sympathetic you know you understand where he's coming from so so what about like as long as we're on the subject what do you guys think that the best anime licensed fighting game is do y'all have a you have a, a anime favorite on licensed that? fighting game that's it's dragon ball fighters dude it's there's no it? competition yeah it's dragon ball fighters unless um, you think of something yeah i i'm actually not sure uh like one that's tied into an anime um people like the new grand blue game uh, well i mean you know it's that's mobile game first though sure 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 which yeah, so it obviously exactly deserves sure. scorn. I don't understand. Is that ba- is mobile fighting gaming? Is it way lagging behind the complexity of like? So let's let's talk about that. If I get a fighting game on mobile, is it? Am I guaranteed not to get like a full like if I'm on a console? I mean, I don't know. I well, mean, there's there's not really um, there's not really a competitive fighting game that's on mobile. Yeah, there are some. There have been some attempts, but they're kind of you know low budget, uh, not a lot of hard work i believe the grand blue mobile game was it's an rpg it's isn't rpg it? yeah so, okay but they so, released a fighting game for it on they? console recently okay so i want to give a shout out 
got Carson Bishop says Seattle in the house. Oh, like we got Seattle. we got somebody watch, from Seattle watching on the on the live stream. So awesome. you never know that that the live stream stuff wigs me out because it's like you just want to watch people talking on a microphone, but people like it. So there it is. I love it. Awesome. If the, if you like it, go for it. Thanks, Carson. Thanks for watching. Um, so okay, so let's let's get this in, and then we'll go to a break. What is your favorite game on each current generation console and PC? Like if you have one, like a recommendation you think should, people should play. Uh, so you got what? We got PlayStation Four, Xbox, and then uh, Switch, the Switch, and, and then PC. PC. Do you, off the top of y'all's head, do you have any recommendations? We'll start with Max. Go over to Nick. <laughs> yeah, I got one. Um, so uh, right now, I mostly focus on fighting games. That's my genre of specialty. And uh, the only game that I'm actually currently playing and playing at a competitive level is called. Uh, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. Not Super Sentai, but Power Rangers? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's Power Rangers uh, colon Battle for the Grid. Yeah. And it's it's on everything. It's on Switch. It's on PlayStation 4. It's on PC. It's on Xbox One. And uh, it's a um, 3v3 Marvel vs. Capcom tag fighter. So for the people... So a tag fighter means you have up to three characters yes. and you tag one in at a time. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so you can also, yeah. um, your main character can also have uh, assists by the other characters. Right, yeah, they come in, they'll drop in out of wherever. Yeah, right? they'll do yeah. like an attack or something, and your main yeah. character's still in there. Okay. So, so that's that's on, so that's your rec for all all yes. all yes platforms <laughs> is Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. Yes. Okay. And I got I to gotta throw a shout out real quick. Um, Comcast, at least on their live streaming online, has, has Shout Factory. And Shout Factory shows all kinds of cool stuff, but one of the things that they show is is Super Sentai, okay, which is the the Japanese show that was adapted into Power Rangers. So if you if you got Comcast, go to I, I don't know if it's on the actual TV, but it, when you go to their live streaming online, they have all these channels, and one of them is Shout Factory, and huh. they got all kinds of anime, and they got all kinds of cool stuff on there. I just discovered it recently. Cool. All right, Nick, what's your picks? Well, I'll just go ahead and shout out Street Fighter Five, I guess, because Street it had Fighter the, or Shoot Street Fu- Street Fighter. Fighter. Yeah, okay, yeah, because that's your thing. You love some Street Fighter. Yeah, I've been you, getting you bigger love, into You it. have the picture, the guy with the muscle shirt and the flat top. You have his picture <laughs> all over your room. Oh yeah, that's right. Now, who's, who's your favorite character? Uh, my favorite character is actually this new character in the series called G. Yeah. Oh. And he's like a mixture between Uncle <laughs> Sam and Abraham Lincoln. Why he's not? A, he's a pretty crazy looking dude. <laughs> does he have a top hat maneuver? Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> he's the president of the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's great. So, okay, so that's which platform are you playing that on? I play on PC, but it's yeah. on PS4 as well, and it's cross-play between the two platforms. So if you own one, you can play yeah. against people on the other if you want. Okay. So, um, and that's it. That's your recommendation. I mean, you can throw anything else out there you want. Uh, if we want to step away from fighting games real quick, well, I sure. will always sing the praises of Devil May Cry. And okay. Devil May Cry 5 came out last year. If you haven't played that Is series, Dante back? See, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. He's All always right. back. He's always back. <laughs> Can't All get right. rid of him. Dante. <laughs> Uncle right. Dante is too important. It is important to the franchise, don't you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know what accent that was, but <laughs> it sounded good for a second. So, uh, I think, like I said, I've played some Tekken. I've got the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, the most recent one. I played about halfway through the story mode where they they smashed, uh, they smashed the Capcom and Marvel world, and everybody's fused mm-hmm. like a mixture of each other, or something like that, or the worlds are fused, and that was pretty good. But I'm playing that in the story, you know, mash buttons mode mm-hmm. about halfway through. I need, I need to get back to it. Uh, play Tekken, um, a fighting game I bought on the Wii. Because it had the Gachamon characters in it. Oh, okay. Uh, was, uh, I can't remember the name of it Tatsunoka now. Tatsunoka versus Capcom? Was that what it was? Yeah, but yeah. it had the, what we would know as G-Force or Battle of the Planets, yeah, but yeah. it had the Gachamon characters in yeah, it. Yeah, that was a great game. It had some crazy dude in it, or maybe I'm thinking, of, I don't, I'm just going to stop. There was some <laughs> kind of, I don't know if it was Chiop had the yo-yo. Somebody had a weird yo-yo attack okay. in that one. Yeah, some yeah. Like short guy, I don't know. Anyway, that's about my fighting game experience right there. Other than like putting quarters into Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat back in the day mm-hmm. and just slapping and, and hoping that I knew what I was doing and I never did. <laughs> no, so. I understand. Yeah, I played uh, fighting games in the arcade as well. And one of my uh, fondest memories of that when I was younger, I was like eight years old and uh, our arcade was super messed up in how they had their Tekken machine set up. Right. 
So it was like uh, it was set to a 30 second timer and the, the seconds just tick down really fast. So uh, I would just hit him once and then I would just block for the next like five seconds right. and I would just win the round. And uh, like 30 year old guys, you know, I was eight years old or right. whatever. 30 year old guys just wanted to take Chill. me outside and yeah. beat me up or yeah, something. And slap yeah. you around. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, it's your machine. <laughs> your machine till you lost. Is that how it works in an arcade? Uh, That's how it's supposed to work. Yeah. But sometimes I just kind of like, all right, yeah. if you want it that bad, you can have it. <laughs> back, in, back in my arcade days, they, you know, you'd put, you would put your token up on the you'd top put the of coin. the machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that, that, that would kind of reserve your spot. I, re- I can remember in, was it late 80s, early 90s when Mortal Kombat first came out? I remember Mortal Kombat was like crack. I mean, people mm-hmm. were like, they could not believe Mortal Kombat and how cool it was and the, you know, because that that was the first like photorealistic fighting game that I can mm-hmm. remember where the you know the the uh, sprites or whatever looked kind of photo and I guess the fighting was good and the fatalities mm-hmm. and all that. I mean, I remember people were blown away by Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so wh- how healthy is the Mortal Kombat franchise now? Um, in terms of sales, Mortal Kombat always does very well in terms of sales. Yeah. In terms of the competitive scene. It doesn't usually last as long as like the Smash scene or the Street Fighter scene or the Tekken scene, but um, they the developers usually put a lot of money into their pro circuit, so they usually take care of their players. Okay, so what which because I know talking to Nick over the you know over the years when he's talked to me about his gaming and everything, a lot of gaming companies have respect for how well they treat the franchises and the fans. And other gaming companies don't. They're like, no, nah, they're just running the franchise. But then, you know, they're running the franchise into the ground for a quick buck. But the other people are like, man, this company's great because they respect. So who's who's like on top company-wise? Who do you think treats their properties and their fans the best? That's a great question. Uh, it really depends who you ask. Uh, for example, um, Capcom makes Street Fighter. Right. And so this newest Street Fighter, Street Fighter Five. A lot of people, if you ask the general consensus for most people, they would say, oh, you know, they, they did so many things wrong with, with this right. new iteration. Uh, but Capcom's also putting a lot of money into their pro circuit. So in terms of the competitive players, they're treating them right in that respect. Right. Um, on the other hand, Nintendo makes Smash, and they don't put any money into their, I mean, just no tournament's going to get any sort of monetary sponsorship by Nintendo. That's just not Nintendo's thing. Yeah, Nintendo okay. just doesn't yeah. care about doing that. Right. Um, but um, but they, they treat their fans well in other aspects, just not that, not that particular. Way. They're, not, yeah. they're not, okay. So what, and if, you don't, you know, if you're like, ah, I don't want to get negative or whatever, that's fine, but I'll throw the question out there anyway. Which company do you think is the worst? Which, which do you think just slaps their fans around and doesn't treat their franchises with respect or whatever oh i got which one. which franchise has been running into the ground team ninja team running ninja <laughs> dead or alive into oh, the ground okay. is what they've been doing uh, yeah. yeah i mean that's okay 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 i, I can understand so that. it's dead not alive uh, it's they more answer, dead than alive. they answered the question dead or alive they say well we'll say dead <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so what what he's getting at there's a couple of things one their season passes are like a hundred dollars or something and granted you get all five thousand costumes or whatever but you know every other company's season pass is like twenty bucks. So uh, so some people aren't too happy about that. And then I'm pretty sure he's also talking about the fact that every time you want to change your hair color, you you have to pay yeah, some pay amount of money, micro transaction yeah. or something. Okay. And, and even if you've already bought this hair color once before, so they're obviously in it to squeeze every possible buck they can, whether they're treating people respectfully or not. Is that a fair way to put it? Sure. Okay. Um, they they claim they're going to change the hair color thing, but. You know, it's <laughs> See, just because, that, yeah. And that's an aspect of gaming that has never been important to me. Like, I'll always go with the default. I don't care. But, I mean, it's obviously a big deal, right, to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I see, I mean, I'm, I know they'll be talking about this fighting game is going to get this character. And I'll be, there'll be massive discussion about that character. So that, you know, that's, I don't get anywhere near that deep into it. But I, every now and like I saw recently, Spawn's showing up in one of them. I can't remember. Mortal Kombat. It, yeah. So, and it, I like Spawn, so that interests me. Mm-hmm. You know, but but you know, the, I mean, I'll see like it's like the president's doing a news conference when they're like, it's confirmed that this character's gonna be in there and he's gonna have this move or whatever. You know, so it's a big deal to a lot of people. I'm not I'm not looking down on. I'm saying this is important to mm-hmm. a lot of people. So companies treat your fans right. <laughs> yep. Treat your fans right. So, all right, we're going to get a break in. We come back. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about um, 
Oh, let me throw a quick note out here before I forget. Talking about that Centaur uh, event that's going to be uh, mid-April, April 18th and 19th in Conway, the, the competitive video gaming is going to be on the 18th. And it's not competitive, but just RPG games, tabletop RPG games are going to be on the 19th. And we're looking for more GMs and DMs right now. Uh, there's we got 20 tables, plenty of space. Uh, and if you is so, you know, hit me up on Twitter at Shane Plays, or go to the Facebook page, or email me at Shane at ShanePlays dot com. Um, or if you know Max, get a hold of Max because uh, he, you know, he can refer people to me. Uh, but if you if you get on the official RPG schedule and your game is approved and on the schedule and everything, then you'll get into Centaur both days free. Okay, but it's got to you got to come run a game and and a real game, not show up and say, oh, I'm just here and do 30 minutes and then take off. Okay, it's you're gonna you're gonna be vetted. You'll get on the schedule. We've never had problems with that before. I'm just saying that in general uh, because Centaur wants to make sure that they provide a really solid experience to everybody. So anyway, get a hold of me or Max or if you know anybody involved with the Centaur tournament, and we're looking for GMs and DMs, and that'll be on April 19th in Conway. All right, we'll get us to a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more competitive gaming, and I'm going to talk to Max and Nick about the game that first gave them the bug. I want to know the game that first infected them with this bug. Well, that's actually, you know, that's probably not a good analogy these days. Uh, the, the game that first got you excited... The, the game that first got you excited about all this. When we come back on Shane Plays Geek Talk. Sure, daring suspense and just a touch of romance. Cursova has you covered. Since 2016, Cursova has been publishing the very best in contemporary fantasy and science fiction, retro pulp, and for you D&D gamers, Appendix N style fiction. Based in Little Rock, you can pick up their flagship magazine locally or at Michael Tierney's The Comic Book Store on Treasure Hill Road or Collector's Edition on JFK in North Little Rock. Swing by one of Michael's stores and pick up an issue or find them on Amazon. C-I-R-S-O-V-A. Not doesn't start with a K. It starts with a C. C-I-R-S-O-V-A. Cursova Magazine. Check them out today. And speaking of Michael Tierney's uh, comic book shops, comic book lovers, head to Michael Tierney's local comic book stores for the newest books on the shelves, plus a fantastic selection of back issues. Visit the comic book store on Treasure Hill Road in Little Rock and Collector's Edition on JFK Boulevard in North Little Rock. And don't forget to click on over to the wildstars.com. Michael Tierney knows comics. In addition to being in business for nearly four decades and publishing his own comic book series, The Wild Stars, for almost as long and still going, he has written multiple columns for comics magazines and is an Overstreet Price Guide advisor. Michael is also the author of the wildly successful, high-quality, four-volume labor of love, the Edgar Rice Burroughs 100-Year Art Chronology. Remember, for all of your comic book needs with friendly service, make sure to visit the comic book store and Treasure Hill Road in Little Rock, Collector's Edition on JFK Boulevard in North Little Rock, and thewildstars.com to learn more. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. And last, but never, ever, ever least, I want to go ahead and throw out some love to Game Goblins. Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. That's 501-224-GAME or GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there is plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. For all of your gaming needs, I hardly recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First time customers, mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. And folks, if you do visit any of my sponsors, please tell them that you hear about them on the show. That helps them know uh, that their advertising money and the relationship we've built is, is time and money well spent. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to Patreon. 
dot com slash Shane Play. Shane Stacks on the radio. Oh yeah, I love that. Hey, welcome back to Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. We're talking competitive gaming, competitive video gaming, the competitive uh, fighting gaming uh, circuit, uh, specifically with Max and friend of the show, Nick, a.k.a. Swigs, Nicholas Swigs. Where did Swigs come from? I asked you one time and you said you didn't remember. Is that right? No, no, no. Okay. (laughs) It's got a long history. Pretty much. It all comes down from me having to change my name multiple times in Final Fantasy fourteen. Okay. So it's got a it's got a gaming connection. Right. Hardcore gamer, right? There's here. some deep lore in there, just like Yoshimitsu. Yoshimitsu. <laughs> all right. So a uh, couple of quick show notes here and then we're gonna get back to talking with Max and uh Swigs and we're gonna we're gonna find out what was the game that got them bit, that got them so heavy, that one light bulb moment. When everything changed. First, I want to throw out some quick show notes. So uh, the show notes and the links for every show for the podcast uh, and Krypton Radio version of the show will be up at shameplays.com. That's S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S.com. Always welcome your feedback on the show on my Twitter at shameplays. Uh, last week's show was out there, and that was episode 215, uh, where we were talking about Bigfoot Bill with Earthworm Jim creator Doug Tin Naple. So he's got uh, he's doing some cool stuff with Earthworm Jim and a other, another character named Bigfoot Bill. And Earthworm Jim, I don't know if you guys were Earthworm Jim players or not, but it's, it's supposed to be coming out on the Amico. There's like this um, Intellivision thing coming out, console, and that's huh. supposed to be one of the launch games is a new Earthworm Jim game. So there you go. Uh, yeah. Has he ever been in a fighting game? Has Earthworm Jim ever showed up in a fighting game? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so but okay. i'm not sure it's yeah. been a long time ago if he has yeah it's a he's a pretty he's still a pretty popular character um you know i interact with doug some and and he he gets a lot of interest in that character still podcast goes out on uh on the blog at shameplays.com itunes google play music stitcher Podbeam, youtube and more and last but never ever least shame plays is carried on krypton radio krypton radio is sci-fi for your wi-fi uh, uh something that came up over the break over the break over the break that i want to throw out there uh max tell us it sounds like uh on the 18th um april 18th at centaur the video game competition is going to have streaming you're going to stream it is that right yeah um so i'm going to be streaming it on my channel twitch.tv slash arc fighters a-r-k fighters uh with an s at the end and so it's uh, a-r-k a-r-k, A-R-K fighters with an fighters s. Okay. yes um, and we're going to be doing our best to stream as much of the, uh, the good matches as we can. Um, I'm going to make a note this of that. Is, that. There's no way to stream all the matches because you have so many players, but we'll do our best to, to, uh, for the people watching to show them a good show. Right. So how, what, how much stuff do you do on your Twitch channel? Do you do any personal gaming or do you just use it for streaming events? Or? Um, recently I've been using it for streaming events, but, uh, other community related stuff um, we'll have on our stream. So if we do a, like a lobby for um, a community um, online gaming lobby, right. sometimes I'll stream that. Or sometimes uh, if I'm training for a big event, I'll stream that as well. Right, sure. Now, what is a what is a online gaming lobby? What is that? Um, so for our group, um, for certain games, we're trying to. Uh, build the community up so people who are newer to the game can learn from uh, other players that are more experienced or people can just try to get better by playing people of a similar skill level. Right. So we'll host in our group uh, an online lobby where we'll say, hey, if you're interested in, in joining and learning, then you can um, put your info down and we'll invite you within the game uh, into a lobby where um, everybody who's interested can play each other. So it's a good way for people to get their feet wet and all of this yeah, yeah yeah and now when you say people to put their information in you talking about contact you on your twitch channel or how if somebody was interested in something like this how would they get into it so generally speaking i put it in our facebook group which is called uh, arkansas fighting game network uh version 2.0 okay uh, the link to that is facebook.com slash groups slash arfgn Okay, I'll put all these links in the podcast version of the show. And um, generally speaking, when, whenever we want to host one of these, uh, we'll put, make a post in the group, and then anybody who's interested can reply to that. But um, what a lot of people do, especially people who are newer to the scene and don't have access to all this, they'll message me, and they'll just say, hey, uh, 
you know, I'm trying to learn this game. Can you uh, help me out with that? And I'll try to facilitate, um, you know, a lobby for them so that more experienced players can help them out or people can answer their questions, stuff like that. Cool. All right. Very good. And like I said, I'm going to get with uh, Max after the show, make sure you get all these links from him and I'll put them in the podcast version in the Krypton radio version and YouTube version of the show and all that stuff. YouTube is just audio, but I do throw it out on YouTube and some people like to listen that way. All right. So we got just a few minutes here. I want to, I want to kind of close the show or, or take us towards the end with, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to start with uh, Nick to give you a break. Cause you just did a bunch sure. of talking. What was the game, Mr. Swiggs that got you that you remember first, like, that we're, you're like, wow, this is like, there's something in this that really I like. I like a lot. Uh, the first game that really got me in was definitely Halo 2. And this has been like 2004-ish. Mm-hmm. And I played a lot of ranked games in that match. And I didn't really try to go anywhere with competition in it. But after that, then Halo 3 came out. And that's when I started to try to really get a competitive sense of the game and just you know, work my way up. I never actually got a chance to go to any competitions, got real close. We had a team, but things just didn't work out at the sure. last second. And I ended up not really doing a whole lot with it, but I still did really well in the game, and I got max rank in the game and all the playlists. You took Max's rank? <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <Give> <laughs> <that>. <laughs> Throwing around all this gamer lingo. <clears throat> max rank. You got the highest rank you can yes. get. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I got to the <laughs> highest ranks you could possibly get in all the playlists in that game. So that was pretty fun. I enjoyed that a whole lot. And that's what really set me off to uh, play competitive games. But specifically for fighting games, what interested me in that was the first time I saw Marvel vs. Capcom 2. That I game just was blew my is, mind. Yeah. Just so did you, what was it? Just everything about it? I mean, what was oh, the. Yeah. Yeah, it's just this giant mashup of a whole bunch of characters yeah. from two different universes. It was a smart. It was a smart mix. Like Reese's peanut. Some stuff just when it mixes <laughs> together works, right? Yeah. Got chocolate, my peanut butter. So, who's your favorite character in that? And Marvel vs. Capcom two. Yeah. Um, from a non-competitive standpoint, I think my favorite character is probably Ruby Hart. I like her design, and I like a lot about of her attacks and movements and stuff. But unfortunately, she's not super competitively viable. Right. That's not me, you, you, <laughs> you enjoy playing her. Yeah. You yes, enjoy yes. playing her, but it, it, you, that's not the character that you that you want the competitive advantage with. Yeah. Okay. If all I right. were to choose a competitive character, I definitely. I mean, Magneto. He's all yeah. basically always going to be at the top. <laughs> super good. <laughs> Um, I like Iron Man specifically, and I know he's got his infinite, and people kind of hate <laughs> getting rolled over with that. But I just like Iron Man in general. So yeah, all right, fair enough. All right. So what what about you, Max? What was the game that first hooked you? Uh, the first game that I took seriously, um, I played it on PC when I was younger. It was uh, Quake Two. Um, yeah, I remember. I Quake. put hundreds. Quake was Quake was one of the games that really got competitive video gaming going yeah i mean i remember you know i mean of course doom came first mm-hmm. but but quake was the game that really had that fever pitch of i mean i remember people like there was a guy playing quake who was so good and this i think this was back in the days of wheeled mouses he had a whole i think he was a sponsored guy and he had a whole pile of boxes of mouses next to him all mice always mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and as soon as the mouse got to the point where he didn't like it. He would chunk it. He would pull one out, play it, and he could immediately tell this one's good or this is not. I mean, he just went through mice oh. like crazy. Yeah. But anyway, so Quake 2. Yeah, Quake 2. Um, so that, uh, that was basically the, the counter-strike of its time. <laughs> right. But um, in terms of fighting games, uh, my uh, old roommate, a uh, good friend of mine, he was uh, uh, probably, arguably one of the best fighting game players the state's ever seen national uh, competitive um that's you know what what skill level he was right. like national competitor um but he, uh we both got into street fighter 4 and when that came out and that kind of revitalized the, the fighting game scene back from you know it was almost dying and the street fighter 4 came out and just blew up again what was it uh, what, street fighter 4 street fighter 4 yeah. okay so street fighter keeps coming up that seems to be like a huge a huge player in the like Street Fighter seems to be like a vital part. Yeah, Street Fighter used to be the strongest uh, traditional non-Smash fighting game uh, in the world in terms of the competitive scene. Um, you had so many offline events for it. Um, 
the the largest um, fighting game tournament in the world was basically built on the back of Street Fighter and Marvel vs. Capcom, hmm. which are both Capcom produced games. Right. So can somebody, for the love of goodness, help me sleep better at night and explain E Honda to me? Do you remember E Honda? He's a sumo wrestler. What the? Heck? But he what didn't he have like crazy? Like he could fly across. The, I don't know, or maybe I know there was you one might, really. You think about Blanca. Blanca, he's a, he's yeah, a it's green. like a whole crazy Hawaiian thing, or so I don't know. Brazilian, Brazilian. Brazilian. Well, but he had like weird, like hair color or so. Orange. I can't, yeah, so, so that's who I'm thinking of. Okay, so yeah. Blanca was a, is a green character with orange hair. That's it. Yeah, he, he's the, kind of bizarre. He uh, yeah. you mash buttons, and then he. Uh, does this electricity thing? Yeah, but um, yeah, they keep changing his backstory. So <laughs> at first he was like he's bioengineered raised super by weapon. fish or something, yeah. and then in the movie, which is totally not canon, he was uh, shoot, I, I forgot what his backstory in the movie was. Anyway, it, it's all bizarre. No matter no matter so, what story you look right, at, it's all bizarre. Street Fighter, one of the early video game movies, they weren't known to be good back then. Do all competitive gamers secretly love the Street Fighter movie? But they won't I don't admit think it's it? a secret. Yeah. The, the movie is great. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's, it's not. It's not an opinion. It's a fact. Yeah. Well, you know the thing about Raul Julia it was his last movie. Yeah. And the only reason he did it is because his kids liked Street Fighter, and he wanted or liked that kind of thing. So he wanted to leave them a movie that that they would like. I think that's really pretty great. Yeah. So, yeah. He, he, I've never actually watched the Street Fighter movie. So you recommend it? That you haven't seen the movie? Uh-uh. Oh, I've seen yeah. parts of it here and there. I, I have no problem admitting that I enjoy the uh, Super Mario Brothers movie. Knowing what I'm going into, right? <laughs> it's it's better <laughs> than that geek. movie. Yeah, as a geek, uh-huh. there's some funny parts in the suit. In the suit, I mean, they did weird stuff with it, but there's some funny parts in it. You know, the uh, Koopas are dancing again, sir. So, so, fun fact about the Street Fighter movie: um, there's actually a video game based on the movie. So there's a, a video game based on the movie, That's which is pretty based meta. on the game. That's pretty. Yeah, meta. yeah, it's pretty crazy. Is and, it pretty bad? Uh, <laughs> I think it is. But. I mean, <laughs> it's, they probably made it more for the casual player who watched, saw the movie, right? I it's mean, actually uh, they built it as a as their version of Mortal Kombat. So it has like the life like right. Like they take the characters in the movie and they, you know, um, I don't know. They use their cameras when to you rip, record them. Uh, Blanca's head off. Does like purple blood come out? <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't think there's any of that kind of violence. No fatalities. No. Uh, We've got, I think we're, what, what do we got about a minute? Late? We got one minute left, guys. So, all right, folks, uh, don't forget that not only is there um, competitive gaming here in Arkansas, uh, but God willing and the crick don't rise, there will be a uh, an event on April 18th, uh, Centaur, at the Conway Expo Center, where there'll be some competitive gaming that Max is helping to organize. Uh, and what, real quick, throw out, your your Twitch channel and your Facebook again real quick. Okay, our Twitch channel is uh, twitch.tv slash arcfighters. Same as our Twitter. Our Twitter is at arcfighters. Yeah. And our Facebook uh, page slash group, we have both, is Arkansas Fighting Game Network. Um, the group is version 2.0, but either one or both. Um, Will work. Yeah. If you want to talk to people, the group is better. If you just want to look at what we're doing, the you know you can just like the page. Okay, I got to drawing this down. Nick, any any super last shout outs you want to throw out there real quick? Anything you want to mention? I got to I got like five seconds. I'm Nothing. Good. Your beard is mighty. Thanks. All right, Zach. This bad joke of the week is for you. A priest, a minister, and a rabbit walk into a bar. The rabbit says, "I think I might be a typo." Priest, minister, and a rabbi. A lot of jokes <laughs> start that way. It's Zach, I'm going to miss you. I love you, man. We're here to talk about one thing, Yoshimitsu. Just what the hell is this guy? In the latest installment, Tekken 7, he appears to be some sort of squid man with tentacles. Yeah, I think I've seen enough hentai to know where this is going. He's just one step away from becoming too hot for television. Here's what we know so far. Yoshimitsu always appears in Tekken with a different outfit. He uses his own style of ninjutsu where he can twirl his hands around in a circle so fast that it's enough to lift himself off of the ground and 
fly. Well, you don't see that every day. To understand just what we're looking for here, we have to also include Yoshimitsu's Soul Calibur appearances, as they are what defines this character and sets off a chain of events that lands Yoshimitsu into gaming history as one of the most deep fighting game characters I've ever done research on. <laughs> Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual? For as little as $1 an episode, simply go to patreon.com slash Shane 